Middle Fork of the Salmon River, one of the best fisheries in the world. And this we come with Helfrich River Outfitters. We're gonna spend six days in the Frank Church Wilderness. We flew in this morning from Stanley to Indian Creek to meet them. It's getting our safety talk in and uh, we'll get going. Welcome to the Salmon River. Okay, to my point about this being the best fishing river. What's that? Oh, I'm talking to the camera. Kelsey Helfrich behind me. Um, to my point about this being the best fishing river um, possibly in the world. We're about a quarter mile into this trip, 20 minutes. Tim over here in this boat with uh, Master Ken Helfrich has already cut three fish. And Lori back here just started fly fishing. She's been fly fishing for about 10 minutes and she already caught a fish. So, the fishing is good on the middle fork. Always. So is, the, is this the best fishing river in the world? Yeah, yeah, okay. Kelsey Alfred thinks this is the best fishing river in the world. Not like she's biased or anything. So like I mentioned earlier, we're here for six days with Helfrich River Outfitter. It is Helfrich's 100th year anniversary. They've been in business for 100 years, all helmed and led by a Helfrich. Right now they're in their fourth generation with Kelsey Helfrich and her husband, Kid Joran. On this trip, you'll see a bunch of different people, but really it's just two groups. There's two families, and then there's the Helfriches, there's the guides, and then there's me, and I even have a family member on this trip. My uncle is a guide for Helfrich. But you can see that there's some green floor spar in here also. Okay, so we are at Little Soldier Campground. It's about six miles from Indian Creek where we started today, so a real short day means we got 69 miles left. Since we had a short day, uh, there wasn't a whole lot of fishing that could be done, but I think Bob or Tim or one of the matriarchs of this family caught 20 fish. The way they rigged these flies up, I saw it last time, is they put two flies on the line. I think one's an indicator, and then the fish normally strikes the second one, kind of tagging along. But the fishing on this river is so good. There's a lot of times you'll get two fish on at once, and I was seeing that happen quite a bit today. I have a ridiculous amount of room in this tent. All this room that will soon be strewn with my camera gear and um, charging station and batteries and things of that nature. Dad, I'm tired. It's only day one, too. Oh. It's gonna be a long week. So this is the bathroom situation. Very nice groover. This is changed out every day. Got your toilet paper and you just sit here and do your business and it's very nice. And a run of eight for 16. Oh my God. <sighs> this is Uncle Tim. He taught me to play this game on the river. And here we are again, playing it on the river. <laughs> eight? You see eight there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, pair for 10. <laughs> <laughs> that you could ever have outdoors. This is how they do it, it's 5.30 in the morning. 
And my uncle is making coffee over this open fire back here. Pours the grounds in, grounds sink to the bottom. No filter needed. It's delicious stuff. drift boats are they don't splash like a raft so if you're sitting in the front of that drift boat even when you go through big rapids you won't get wet and they're better for fishing you can stand up in them and they're very maneuverable they're really unique no one on this trip knows anything about my YouTube channel and so when I do things like this like hold a camera over here and talk to myself uh, I can feel them staring at me uh, it's day two day two you just kind of settle down and and you really get into it. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna get into it. Morning of day three. I have uh, skipped breakfast and hiked my ass all the way up this ridge line. I wasn't allowed to bring the drone because we're in the wilderness. So now I gotta do this uh, old school. From up here, you can see how big this canyon really is. And we haven't even hit the biggest section yet, the impassable canyon. This is the Frank Church wilderness and it's the biggest wilderness in the lower 48. If you don't know who Frank Church was, he's kind of a big deal in Idaho and definitely a big deal in the outdoor uh, Pacific Northwest community. A pioneer and a big reason Idaho is the outdoor playground. It still is today. Not a bad legacy to leave with uh, the biggest wilderness in the United States being named after you. So. Thank you, Frank Church. Also, I can see my camp packing up. So um, I better get down there and hit you right on the drift boat. So the backcountry plain system here was grandfathered into this wilderness. You know, typically in a wilderness, you're not allowed to have any kind of motorized vehicles in it. As wildernesses were designated that, any of the traditions or ways of life that were already taking place in these areas were allowed to continue. So that's why you see planes back here, jet boats in Hell's Canyon, and I'm sure a, n a number of other unique things is in different wildernesses. My name is Helfrich, and my is taking people down these various rivers. Prince Helfrich was the first person to guide trips on the Middle Fork. 
in the past you actually had to know boat skills and know how to raft and be able to do your own trip to go down these rivers and uh, people like Prince made it possible for for the masses to experience these places so Prince's grandson is here Ken Helfrich and then his daughter who's taking over the business Kelsey Helfrich is here really cool to be able to go down the middle fork with a family that lives it and then yeah I also got my uncle here uh, my uncle who was the first one to ever take me rafting on the South Fork of the Boise. He, he, that's how I actually was introduced to Idaho when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> what? Oh, I, got, I, got, I thought you were questioning why we're sitting next to each other. Oh, there we go. Oh. Through somehow their weird Helfrich magic, yeah. like we're running rivers together like 20 years later, right? When yeah. did we first start running rivers? Like. Yeah, it would have been probably even longer ago than that, yeah. actually. <laughs> yeah, when you would come visit and we'd go on little floats and yeah. And then we didn't float for a long time and then all of a sudden through this company, Helfridge, here we are floating again. I was thinking of that yesterday as I was floating down the river. How exactly did you get connected with Helfridge? Oh my gosh, I think that I had a... I had a piece for Visit Oregon that I needed to do on the Owyhees. I reached out to Kelsey, asked her if I could do that trip. Later when I was working for Visit Idaho, I asked her to do the Middle Fork trip, and I did not know that was the trip you ran. Yeah. Like I knew you worked with them every year, but I didn't know your schedule. Right. And then all of a sudden, yeah. there you are. There I am, <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure this one was intentional the first one probably was too but yeah this one certainly was yeah we could do it together again yeah kelsey probably was like i better put him on a trip with yeah. his uncle tim i mean again that's their thing right yeah it is I am hiking the main trail through the Frank Church wilderness here. I mean, you could backpack this 100 miles if you wanted to, and this is the trail you would use. I'm realizing that it is a lot different experience when you're in the wilderness alone versus when you're with a group, because I was really zoning out when I was by myself, just vibing on the Frank Church wilderness.
Well, there it is. The middle fork. We had some fun. We had some laughs. We caught some fish. We saw some stars. We hit some rapids. We did some hiking. We did a lot of eating. We made new friends. We saw old friends. And we spent some time. And that made us closer to each other, to this, to everything. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you.